G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well, what a week we've had. It's Saturday here in Australia, so sort of Friday evening in other places in the world. The weekend's here. Uh, you know, have we already sort of had the weekend retracement, you know, uh, yesterday? Uh, or is there still some to come? Uh, very interesting times at the moment. I keep thinking there's going to be a pullback and it just keeps going higher. I mean, look at this market cap now, you know. One trillion and sixty-six billion dollars. Uh, it just keeps going up. It, it, you know, it will have pullbacks. And look, Bitcoin itself has some 15, 20 percent pullbacks, but it doesn't last more than two seconds, and then it just, you know, keeps going. So it is such a interesting time uh, to be in this space. But look, this is a little bit old, so let's give it a bit of a refresh. All right, what do we got? All right, so there we, we lost a, a billion dollars right there in, I don't know, a matter of, you know, 10, 15 minutes or something. Uh, look, uh, ETH, uh, BTC dominance still hanging around that kind of 69%. Uh, ETH, you know, climbing up 12.8% uh, and gas fees have finally come down, thank goodness, but still not cheap. But, you know, a lot cheaper than, yeah, the 100 uh, plus something the gas fees were. Not $100, just the GUI uh, was up around the 100 mark not that long ago. All right, so I'm going to do something a little bit to dif different today. I'm going to run you through my portfolio, uh, at least the bigger ones. I've got, you know, a few different small ones kind of here and there, but I'll give you a, a vague idea. Well, not a vague idea. I'll give you a good idea of what I've invested in and what I'm hoping that will do well. And also, you know, the amounts that, uh, the percentages uh, of them. All right, so first of all, Bitcoin, that's my biggest, yeah, obviously, uh, investment. So we go over here, let's have a look at Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, I have 44% of my uh, portfolio in Bitcoin. I do want to bring that down a little bit, not a whole lot. But as we can see here, Bitcoin's had a pullback. So this is on the daily. All right, what do we got? We were up here and we came down to here. So there you go. We've had an 8% pullback already. Now the day's not over though, so this could get, uh, a, you know, this could go lower or it could go higher. We're waiting to see, but I mean, we had this one literally just a couple of days ago. And what was that? We went over this. There you go. That's basically a 20%. Let's go right there. There you go. That's a 20% correction. And we had that only a few days ago. But it just gets bought up so quick, you barely even notice it. So, you know, normally these 20% 20, 20 corrections, you know, that would happen and then, you know, things would, you know, last for like a, at least a few days or a week. But these are just disappearing in 24 hours. 24 hours and that's it. The market just continues to go back up again. So, look, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin. I just think the altcoins from here are where we're going to see the better gains. If anyone new who's coming and doesn't understand the space, Bitcoin is your best, safest bet. Now, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Please don't take this as financial advice. I'm not qualified. This is just my personal opinion. But Bitcoin's the safest bet. But it's already in uh, price discovery. So, you know, if, it, if we are to have a big correction, uh, you know, just know that this will go backwards a lot. You know, you could lose 50% uh, overnight. But again, at the moment, things are just so bullish. Uh, I'm just not sure that can happen at the moment. But, you know, you never know. Uh, time will tell. But Bitcoin, so that makes up 40, 44% of my portfolio. And I'm probably going to bring that back down to sort of maybe 40% uh, to 30%. Maybe not 30%, that's pretty low. I'll probably sit more around sort of the 40% mark. But that's the biggest part of my portfolio. All right, the next one uh, is Ethereum. So we go over here and we can see that Ethereum uh, on this line, this is against BTC, you know, really Ethereum has uh, outpaced Bitcoin uh, this year. So you should almost really be comparing it to the dollar. But we can see it's just had a bottoming formation really, uh, you know, just kind of ranging really since here. We drop below, we got above, we drop below, and now we're really just, you know, the line that it's currently sitting on at the moment uh, is kind of, you know, the average sort of, you know, the mean against Bitcoin at the moment. But if you go to ETH versus the US dollar, I mean, have a look at this thing. It's been on an up tear for ages, you know. This was the mean line, kind of the average, 
and then just boom, it just went absolutely mental. So, you know, ETH makes up about 34% of my portfolio. So, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they make up, you know, 70, 80% of my portfolio. That's pretty much where most of it is. Uh, and then I start to, do, you know, delve into altcoins. And I'm going to show you the altcoins that I've invested in and that I'm, you know, sort of bullish on. Uh, but again, you know, this was up around, you know, $1,200 and now we're sitting uh, a little bit lower. Sorry, this was up around, yeah, almost 1300 and now we're sitting about 1200 Look, this will probably just keep going up. It hasn't even hit its old all-time high yet. You know, if we're going against the dollar, then we've got to come back here. There you go. We still need to get all the way up to basically, sorry, what is that? 1400 Let's bring this across. This is what we got to do. There we go. So we still got to get to 1400 before we're in price discovery. And then from there, it'll probably just go even more, you know, crazy. But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Again, we can see this was, you know, there was a bit of confluence here, but it was, you know, this was resistance for a while. Then it kind of became support. And then boom, it's, you know, just moved up. And, you know, there's people out there now that are saying you know there's a possibility that ETH is going to repeat what Bitcoin did uh, in the last bull cycle so it's around about a thousand dollars now uh, they're saying it could go to basically nineteen thousand dollars so that is a you know almost a 20x from here so if you're in Ethereum at the moment uh, and again this makes up you know a, a fair chunk of my portfolio 34% and 44% Bitcoin. Um, yeah, if it goes to uh, that, I'll be quite happy. Uh, but again, you know, there's no guarantees in life. Uh, we're still, you know, rolling through this ETH 2.0 and making sure that you know there's no bugs in it and all the rest of it. It's still yet to prove itself. But if things are repeating itself, uh, and yeah, Raul Paul on Twitter showed a really good. Uh, graph of how it is basically following what Bitcoin did. It's just a cycle behind. So look, if this goes to you know nineteen thousand dollars, that is going to make some people seriously rich. Uh, you know, especially if you were lucky enough and you got into ETH down here. And look, I was lucky enough. I did get some ETH down here. Nowhere near as much as I would have liked. I was still skeptical when I got in that it might you know be a fake out and it'd still roll over. But I, you know, predominantly got most of my ETH for around sort of, oh God, the $250 sort of mark. But I did get some down here at the kind of $180 mark. And really, yeah, the two two hundred and fifty has been the average for me. So that means around about here. So at the moment, uh, I am quite happy uh, yeah, with how ETH is doing. And again, I think it's got a whole lot more to go. It hasn't even got to its old all-time high. And look, Bitcoin has basically doubled its old all-time high. So imagine uh, how ETH is going to go. I think that's the better investment at the moment. Uh, for gains, again, you still need to have some Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. You've got to have some Bitcoin, but then you want to have some ETH. And how you divide that up, you know, 50%, 50% or, you know, whatever it is, it's up to you. But I think these two should be the bulk uh, of any portfolio. And that's why I've got it that way. I do want to bring my ETH exposure down just a fraction uh, and bring my Bitcoin exposure down just a fraction just to get more into the altcoins because I think the altcoins are going to do even better again. But at the moment, uh, you know, we're not quite in alt season. I know a lot of people think we are. And look, the alts have been doing reasonably well, don't get me wrong. I think we need to have a correction first. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. But also, we need for Bitcoin dominance to come way down. I think Bitcoin dominance has to be below 60% and maybe even 50% or lower. I'm not sure if we'll, if we'll see that because of the institutional adoption uh, of Bitcoin at the moment. But I think it needs to come down before we really start to see alt season and things just go, you know, completely mental. All right, my next biggest position uh, is synthetics. I'm super bullish on synthetics. It has performed really well. Now, again, these charts that you're looking at, 
Uh, well, that last one was against the US dollar for ETH. I'll show you to the Bitcoin one. But this is against Bitcoin. So we can see it ranged here for a while and then it just went on this tear against Bitcoin. And I mean, its price was, this is not against the dollar, against the dollar uh, synthetics uh, has done extremely well, but particularly when it was, you know, well outpacing Bitcoin. And now this feels like it's just ranging again. It's just going sideways. So it outperforms Bitcoin, it doesn't. It outperforms, it doesn't. It outperforms, it doesn't. And it's just ranging at the moment. And I get the feeling like it's getting ready for an explosive move. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying chuck everything into synthetics network. Please don't do that. Uh, it's still untested and only a couple of years old and going through test phases and beta, you know, and all the rest of it. But if you, you know, you want to speculate a little bit, you want a more risky bet, you know, synthetics is my number one pick. I think this could do something really crazy once we get to the next, uh, once we get to the, you know, peak of this bull cycle. You know, uh, Tika Tawari said it's worth 2,000. Uh, some other people have said, you know, they reckon it's worth about 1,000, 2,000. Well, it's currently trading at about $11 US. So to get to $1,000, that is one hell of a move. That is one hell of a move there. Pretty much 100x uh, from here but again you know we'll, we'll have to sort of wait and see uh, there's no guarantees in life but I love what synthetics is doing I love what they're about uh, I, I like how well it's performed for me so far so synthetics currently makes up around about sort of five percent of my portfolio this is what I want to increase when I take uh, when I readjust my portfolio from Bitcoin and Ethereum I will be looking to make a bigger position in synthetics. I'm just not sure if I want to do it yet. I've got, uh, again, some uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin that I'm ready to exchange, although I don't think I'll exchange Ethereum at the moment. I think it's got too much more upside for me to be putting it anywhere else. It needs to at least get into price discovery. So probably more Bitcoin. I'll take some Bitcoin and put into here. And I also have cash on the side just in case a dip comes as well. But synthetics is where I want to build uh, a bigger position. Now, nothing too large. You know, I'm probably only going to go another percentage or two uh, if I'm lucky, but that's still, you know, reasonably substantial uh, in a portfolio. You know, some people are probably synthetics bulls and maybe have almost 100%. And look, if things work out the way uh, that, you know, we would hope it does with synthetics, you know, they will become unbelievably rich if they've, you know, put in enough money. You know, you put in a $1,000 uh, into this when it was only cents. And I remember uh, Alex from Nuggets News saying that they bought it when it was like four cents or something. And I think I heard him say something like, if you put in a $1,000 uh, into it when it was four cents and this is ages ago you would have had hundred and sixty five thousand dollars from that uh, I know my cheapest entry price uh, is up about uh, fifteen hundred percent uh, from when I got in I just wish I had a bought more at the time but anyway I have sort of dollar cost average in a time in at times with synthetics so at the moment uh, I think I'm around about uh, 4x yeah so about up 400 uh, percent again but my lowest entry point that's about 1500 uh, percent and my latest ones uh, again uh, are a little bit less so it's taking the average so if i build a bigger position in synthetics obviously that 400 percent profit that i'm in now will come down and i'll have to hope that it performs uh, a lot better later but synthetics network is something that uh, i'm extremely bullish on all right link link is something that i'm extremely bullish on now, very, very interesting, this chart. So this was uh, the mean that had been following for a while and it had this massive move and then it fell back. And I thought it was going to move from here and follow the mean. It didn't. So this became bearish. And again, I thought it was going to find support here. It didn't. So what we can do is we can remove this line. So remove. Now, we can still really use this green line if we want because it hasn't been broken yet. So again, this is against Bitcoin. So if it breaks above this green line, it is doing better than Bitcoin. It has broken its sort of downward trend. Now, Link hasn't really lost much in dollar value, depending on when you bought it. I think at its highest, it was worth about $18. And I think at the moment, it's around about uh, $15 or something. So it's lost a few dollars there. Uh, but nothing major. So again, depending on where you got in. But this to me, we can look at this line and this 
uh, has some confluence. So this is now, it's basically meeting up with a peak point uh, and it was resistance here. We can see uh, it didn't quite get up there, but it was you know, being knocked back and then it's used it as support a couple of times as well. So this is a very interesting time for Link at the moment. And again, against Bitcoin, uh, against the dollar, it generally continues to go up. It just hasn't performed as well as Bitcoin has. It had this big massive blow up top, blow off top and it's retraced and now we're down here. So really this line uh, we can get rid of. This was the mean, uh, it's way below it. I'm just gonna leave it for now because I wanna see if it can bounce back up and then start to follow this path and whether this might be just a fake out, uh, something very small uh, like this uh, and then we get back above. But link, again, so that makes up, I think around about two, almost 3% of my portfolio uh, is in Chainlink. I'm a massive fan of Chainlink uh, and it's done pretty well. I got in at a pretty good price. Uh, I just wish I had have sort of bought more and that's always the way things that have performed really well you wish you've had have bought more uh, but you know that's life all right what else ADA where are we Cardano so this thing has performed extremely well so again I only wish I had have put in a whole lot more Cardano was one of my better performers I got in at three cents when this was three cents so uh, you know 700 percent uh, it has gone up uh, from at least I've bought ADA at different times so my very cheapest point uh, again I got in at three cents so it's up 700 uh, percent uh, but again I've bought ADA since so that's brought uh, my overall uh, you know percentage gain down quite a lot and I converted some profits from other things into ADA the other day so uh, ADA currently takes up around about yeah, 2.6% of my portfolio. I will probably increase that, get it up to maybe sort of 3%. Uh, it's performed so well and I think it's got uh, a lot of big things uh, to come. Uh, and again, this is against Bitcoin, so not against the dollar. Against the dollar, I think it's uh, 30 cents Australian and maybe 20 something cents uh, US. But this makes up, yeah, 2.6% of my portfolio and I'll likely increase this because of uh, how much upside. It's nowhere near its old all-time high uh, and there's no guarantees that it will break its old all-time high, but the chances are likely. Uh, again, if something happens once, uh, it might never happen again. If something happens twice, then it's most likely gonna happen a third and fourth and fifth time. So that's what we're waiting to see from Cardano. Can it repeat history and break its old all-time high? Because if it does, it's probably going to go up substantially from there. But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion from time in the space. All right, so what else have we got? What comes after ADA? So VET. All right, so I think the supply chain thing uh, is going to be massive. And what we can see here is that this has kind of been the meme for a while. Uh, again, it's been below this line. Uh, it's bounced off this line a lot. And again, this is against BTC, not against the dollar. The, against the dollar, it's still doing reasonably well uh, and was one of my better performers. I think it was up 200%, uh, almost nearly 300% uh, against, you know, in the dollar kind of value. Uh, and then I readjusted my portfolio uh, only recently and that brought it way down. So, uh, yeah. Currently, VEAT makes up, what do we got? 1.32% of my portfolio. And I'll probably look at bringing that up to around about 2% of my portfolio. Uh, yeah, really happy with VEAT. Uh, I like what they're about. I like all the partnerships. Uh, I really do think that is a place where the blockchain is gonna have uh, a lot of value, like real world value, other than just you know the kind of currencies and that. Uh, blockchain, uh, sorry, uh, product, uh, you know, uh, keeping an eye, not keeping an eye, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tracement, so you can see where it's come from and where it's going and all the rest of it. Uh, just a ledger, uh, so you can ensure that whatever you're buying uh, is exactly what you believe it's buying and you can see where it's come from and all the rest of it. So I think that is uh, some really big real world use case for the blockchain. All right, what else do I have? Uh, after there really, uh, it's XLM. Uh, so Stella makes up 0.87% of my portfolio. I may increase that. Uh, and then Carver makes up 0.86. Uh, and Litecoin. So again, this is a little bit less than 1% uh, of my portfolio. But 
I'm waiting to see. I bought Litecoin uh, very early on, and just because I knew Litecoin, uh, it had been uh, around for a long time, and so I wanted to go for stuff that I trusted more than kind of risky stuff. And look, it's done pretty well. Uh, Litecoin for me is up around about sort of, you know, two hundred percent for me. It's up around two hundred and twenty-six percent since I got in. So I'm pretty happy with that. But look. Bitcoin's outperformed it uh, by uh, quite some, so I'm just kind of hoping that you know once we get to the the mania phase uh, of this you know next alt cycle that I do expect Litecoin to really jump, and I think it's now solidified uh, its long term uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, long term. Uh, Oh God, I can't think of a word. I'm having a total mind blank now. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I think it's going to be around long term now. It's been regulated. Uh, you know, banks are going to start, start taking custody of it and all the rest of it. So I think it's now solidified itself that it is here to stay. That's basically what I was trying to say. So I think uh, it will perform extremely well. I think once other institutions start coming and getting into the space and you know, Bitcoin's just unbelievably expensive and, you know, they'll still buy Bitcoin, but I think institutions and even just retail FOMO, they're going to, uh, not retail FOMO, but the retail will have a look and go, all right, once they do some research, Litecoin is very similar to Bitcoin. There's just more of them, it's cheaper and it's faster. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying uh, Litecoin is better than Bitcoin. I do like Litecoin though. That's why I bought some. A lot of people are just going to, you know, that's all they're going to think is radio. It's like Bitcoin. It's basically uh, almost not a fork of it, but it's a copy of it. But there's more of them. So there's still more to be mined. They're very cheap to get. And it's faster than Bitcoin and it's cheaper than Bitcoin. So I think uh, Litecoin can have some explosive uh, growth in the near future. And I know Charlie Lee has been uh, working with uh, Charles Hoskinson from Cardano uh, and they are looking at building a bridge between the two so that could be massive that means uh, Litecoin can also have smart contracts on it all right now where's the last one all right this is one of my best performers so far so Aave but I actually got into it when it was Lend so I was just you know buying stuff uh, on CoinSpot and I had, I think, about $400 left over and I was trying to diversify. And I just remember I'd heard about Aave and I thought DeFi was going to be big. So I just randomly threw in sort of $399 into Lend back then. So it was, I think, something crazy like uh, $0.03 cents or whatever. That has 10 x Well, 10 x earlier today and then it went back down. But basically, uh, 10 x This and uh, synthetics are my best performers. I wish I had have put more. I mean, imagine I, could, I had have put something like, I don't know, thousands of dollars into it. I would be sitting so pretty right now. I mean, just if I had to put a thousand dollars into it, that would now be worth 10,000. And again, you know, then you magnitude it up. Imagine if I had $10,000 and I could have put it uh, into uh, Lend, it would be worth $100,000 right now. It is just uh, crazy. And at the moment, it really looks like it's uh, just repeating this pattern. Every time it kind of gets down to around about here, it goes on a bit of a run. Now, it had its really big run uh, in the DeFi sort of bubble earlier, and then all the DeFi have done the same. They've pulled back, but we go to here, and there's something very interesting. Here's the old all-time high of Aave against Bitcoin. Look where it currently is right now. So this little dotted white line sitting right there. And again, we dipped down below, down below outperformed Bitcoin. Ranging along with Bitcoin, losing against Bitcoin, bounced. Uh, I just get the feeling like Aave is building and getting set for something else. I, I, I'm massive on DeFi. Uh, I think DeFi is going to be huge. I think, you know, good decentralized products. That's why I really like synthetics. That's why I really like Aave. They're, they're not, you know, kind of private enterprises that are, you know, monopoly owned and all the rest of it. Although, like, don't get me wrong, there's VCs that got into both these projects, no doubt, uh, and have uh, a reasonable stash, but they're, 
they are, you know, basically decentralized. No one really owns these, particularly Synthetics Network. Uh, I'm pretty sure Aave is as well. I need to do a little bit more research on that to 100% confirm it, but I know Synthetics uh, is decentralized, uh, and I believe it got a listing on Coinbase uh, because it was decentralized uh, and no one truly owns it. And I think, yeah, both Aave, you know, it's going to be a lending and borrowing uh, sort of, it's just a smart contract. You know, there's not an entity that owns it that is, you know, out to basically gouge all the money off you uh, and just look after themselves. It's decentralized. It makes sure, it makes sure that it makes enough to keep itself running. But other than that, it's not trying to basically yeah, take all the profits and just give you minuscule amounts. Uh, that's what decentralization is about. That's why I'm super bullish on Aave. That's why I'm super bullish on synthetics. Uh, again, there's not there's not a middleman. There's not someone who's, you know, again, gouging all the profits and then just handing you off measly bits. So uh, Aave. And last but not least, I have some Ren. Uh, and I'm bullish on Ren as well. It just It's really underperformed for a while. I mean, it performed for a little while there. Again, this is against BTC. It just rocketed up there. And now it's just been in this uh, falling kind of wedge. Now, a falling wedge like this is in a bull market, super bullish. That doesn't mean it's going to go crazy. It just could. And again, I thought it was going to bounce uh, back somewhere up here. And this is where I uh, built another position. Uh, and I just lost against Bitcoin really, really badly. I didn't lose in the dollar. Uh, in the dollar, it was still going up bit by bit, not by a whole lot. But against BTC, I just would have been better, uh, you know, putting it into BTC. That's the way it goes. You know, you can't always get it right. But I've seen it coming down and now it's coming to meet this line. Uh, and this is really where it's had some confluence. This has been resistance, bit of support, resistance, support, and then it's just been flying up. And now we're coming back and waiting to see is this going to be support again? Is this where it's going to bottom out and rock it back to the top? No one knows. I'm just taking an educated guess. Uh, and so I have increased my uh, REN position. And again, more back here. So it's still losing against Bitcoin. And look, it could come all the way back down here. Uh, and we have to come here first. And look, if that's what happens, then I'm just going to get some more REN down here. I believe in the project. Uh, and I believe it's going to do well. Uh, it will be a gateway between uh, Polkadot uh, and Ethereum. And also Bitcoin uh, can get on the REN uh, network and then be transferred over to uh, the Ethereum blockchain as well. So it's got a lot of uses. But again, none of this is financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. Look, I've invested in other things though. Uh, Blockstack, Loopring. Oh God, what else? Hang on, let me have a look and I'll let you know but very, very small amounts, nothing sort of too crazy. So what do we got? Carver, uh, KNC, so Kyber Network, Secret Network, Polkadot, Blockstack. I do have some XRP, not a whole lot. Uh, Unibright, uh, Matic, uh, super bullish on Matic, although price-wise it hasn't done too well, but Layer 2 Solutions, it's starting to grow now. Uh, UTK, so uh, Utrust, uh, engine got in those uh, and yeah they're the ones that I have positions in now look I may have to adjust engine hasn't really done too well for me at the moment but I think gaming is going to be huge so I'm really just going to stick with it uh, and what's the other one that really hasn't performed all that well uh, Unibright it's taken such a long time for Unibright to finally be you know in just dollar value it's been absolutely hammered uh, against Bitcoin and Ethereum it's really underperformed but I just believe in Unibright. Uh, I think they are going to be big in the future. And again, I never put that much money. I mean, it's not even 1%. It's less than a percent uh, of my entire portfolio. So, you know, if it doesn't work out and it goes to zero, then so be it. But Blockstack is something that I'm looking into and I may increase my position size. Uh, Blockstack's done quite well and it's building layer two uh, smart contracts and particularly sort of DeFi uh, onto Bitcoin, so that's really, really interesting. Now, other other people have tried that before and it didn't work, so, you know, Blockstack have still got a way to go, uh, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And, yeah, as I said, Polkadot, that's something I want to build my position further in as well. 
All right, look, that's it from me. This one's taken a while. I was just giving you an idea of where my headspace is at, uh, what I've invested in. I've really tried to invest in things that I believe have a future. I think DeFi is going to be big and the decentralized stuff is going to be massive. Now, that's not to say there's not going to be other things out there that are out there that aren't going to pump harder it's just whether i believe they actually have a real world use case that is going to go on for years and years and years that i'm not sure of i think if uh, synthetics you know make sure that everything works properly and there's no bugs and you know they the layer two uh, seems to be working uh, on the beta test net that they're sort of doing uh, and they're moving over to optimistic roll-ups on the january 15th then you know, again, as long as there's no bugs, I think they are going to be unbelievably big. I think I think synthetics has it will be the future unless someone comes out with a better platform than synthetics. And again, they have that first world uh, first mover advantage. I think that you know it'd have to be something special to take out synthetics. Uh, and you know, it is completely decentralized now. Like no one owns it. And Kane, who was you know one of the co-founders on it. He still puts in regular work all the time, you know, making sure to improve the system and, you know, all all this stuff that's still coming to it. He's still working on it. Uh, and that's what makes me super bullish on synthetics. I re that's really my number one. That's the one I think that will uh, do, you know, better than possibly anything else. Uh, at the moment, again, I'm up 1500% from my very first uh, purchase of synthetics, but I've continued to purchase since then. So uh, it's brought it way down. And again, I only wish I had to put in more. Uh, when I first got into synthetics, I think I got into it at 70, 80 cents or something. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, all that sure about it. I just knew it was DeFi and I liked the idea of it. So I just bought a little bit and kept buying a little bit uh, here and there. Uh, and yeah. If only I had, you know, hindsight, knew to put in more. Again, both Aave and Synthetics uh, have really outperformed pretty much anything other than Cardano. Um, you know, I'm still happy. I've got myself a position in Ethereum. I'm really happy with that. I've got myself a position in Bitcoin. I'm really happy with that. Uh, and I've got a position in these as well. I just want to increase the position in those. So for me, going forwards... Uh, dollar cost averaging because again I've built my position I will continue to dollar cost average in I won't be putting as much into Bitcoin as I will into Ethereum and I won't be putting as much into Ethereum as I will be putting in oh no that's probably not true I'll put I'd say 50% of whatever money I have into Ethereum and maybe about 10% of whatever money I have will go into Bitcoin and then the other 40%, I'm going to be putting it into things like uh, Cardano, Synthetics, Aave, Blockstack, uh, Ren, you know, the projects that uh, are still new and still have a lot to go, and Polkadot. Uh, I'll probably actually maybe bring that Ethereum back to 40%. And I'll be putting 10% into Polkadot. I like Polkadot. I think uh, they're going to be big. They're going to be a, a conduit and a bridge between uh, multiple chains and all the rest of it. All right, uh, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Please let me know what your portfolio is like. How have you set it up? What are you super bullish on? Do you think like NFTs are going to be the big thing? They're going to be it? Do you think DeFi still has a whole nother leg to go? Uh, or is it done? Was, you know, the big kind of bubble uh, that happened, you know, and, and here, like this is Ren and all DeFi was the same. Do you think that was it? Or do you think DeFi is, you know, going somewhere? Or do you think Bitcoin uh, is still going to get up and just absolutely smash everything or ETH? Please let me know down below. Uh, I'm always open to, you know, more ideas because, you know, I can't guarantee you that what I'm thinking is going to be how it's going to play out. I don't know. It is just a guess from my time in the space. And that is the same with anyone. I don't care if they're even a seasoned professional. They don't know what's going to happen. They are just guessing what's going to happen. An educated guess, yes, but it's just a guess. You might be the one in a million who just gets it right uh, more than anyone else. Uh, or you could be the person who gets it more wrong than anyone else. I could be that person as well. All right. Again, love to know your thoughts down below. What are you bullish on? You know, how have you set your portfolio up? Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.